So call recorder stopped. Jeez, mate, it's like producing a freaking show, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's crazy. It's crazy. So. Just waiting. Okay, there we go. We're live. At least now I can see the comments. Okay. And uh, cool. And the, I see the chatbot thing has gone out. So uh, great. Um, sorry, guys. We're a little bit uh, late, like nearly half an hour late. And it was my fault. The uh, my, I had issues with my uh, laptop and uh, got it resolved in the end. So uh, let me uh, see if I can change these uh, settings here and get us both on. Boom. I can switch, but how am I going to get? There we go. And hopefully this will add that right. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, <laughs> there should be a way to split the screens and select all. Okay, there we go. We're both on. That's much better. We're on like Donkey Kong. What's what's that about Donkey Kong? I'm like Donkey Kong, mate. Oh, that's gone over my head. I've missed that one. Uh, it's all good, mate. It's all good. Anyway, um, hey guys, uh, thanks for joining us here. And if you've got any comments, just drop them in the comments. And this is your opportunity to ask an expert. So Mike is an the original. Like, um, there's no one before him. The the original mobile marketing messenger marketing. Um, Facebook Messenger expert, and uh, it's an honor to have him on here to to talk to us. I was uh, I reached out to Mike because I was interested to find out what does a chatbot development platform do. What what kind of uh, sirens start going off when Facebook announced that in August they're going to make some fundamental changes like features that we accustomed to are going to be taken away uh, you know for example people that are using um, let's turn this people that are using uh, buttons to send locations so that you can give people directions uh, through APIs and, and then that's going and th there is going to be an alternative but I don't know what the alternative is at the moment anyway uh, there, there's other things and so uh, yeah so we're just we're just gonna have a chat about that and uh, yeah just uh, chatbots and messenger marketing in general so uh, community this is Mike Mike welcome hey Hilton thanks for having me on mate and yeah. I love your shirt <laughs> thank you <laughs> And that jukebox in the background, I think that looks pretty classy, brother. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, in the background because uh, in the summer months, it's out in the patio. And uh, in the winter months, with the we have the, the wet, uh, our rainy season is in the winter. So uh, I bring it inside to uh, protect it. Oh, nice one, mate. Nice one. That's awesome. That's awesome. No, no. It's always been good. I've, uh, I've obviously been following you and the growth of your group's been um, highly commendable, mate. Um, Thank you. And you should be uh, way ahead of uh, some of the other characters out there. You've got a lot of value you can add. Um, and obviously you're, uh, oh, you know, you're not tied into just one platform. You're quite open to have a crack at all of them. And uh, you're obviously probably, you know, if I was to... Uh, find out what the difference in benefits between them all I would probably ask you that question rather than going down my channel yeah I, I've actually uh, built a uh, 
getting started in messenger marketing course and feedback I had I'm, I'm involved in a Perth startup community and feedback that I had from one of the uh, the members there was um, this is going back uh, at least a year ago maybe more and so they started to research chatbots and of course when you start to research chatbots and you're interested in messenger marketing you're not finding the information that you want because what you're going to be pulling up is things like uh, wit.ai, Lewis, uh, IBM Watson, uh, Dialogflow and and then you're going to start going in there oh, this is my experience and, yep. you, and you're going to be looking at this stuff and you're going to be thinking how how do i build this chatbot with node.js and tie it into a machine learning engine and natural language processing and wow this is really really complicated and uh because what we're doing on messenger marketing is probably not really truly a chat bot it you know in the sense of uh, being something that um, I'm trying to think of uh, I saw a demo by uh, Bosch okay so Bosch created this application that integrated into dialogue flow where you could talk to your mobile phone and say set the uh, air conditioning to uh, 24 degrees and uh, so it's the real automation and that's a real robot chatbot thing and it's it's powerful and uh, also with the natural language processing it can understand what you what you're trying to say so be, people come in small business owners and they wanting to they they hear about marketing their business on messenger um, they need to know that there are those platforms for building chatbots and then there's also messenger marketing platforms where you can get your message out and they also need to know that they're not all equal they could land up going to a platform like JVZoo and finding some really horrible simple <laughs> type of platform that just has no capability it it's just like yeah i know that's a, that's yeah i can't you know i hate that word <laughs> i really do i've had, they take a lot of money off a lot of people and you are left with a piece of shit yeah bluntly um i'm sure there's developers out there that'll kill me for it but yeah they they have a certain lifespan yeah well i I went, you know, I started in 2016. Um, I invested in one of those platforms and uh, I have it and I can resell it, but I, I don't because it's just, uh, you can build a chatbot, but it's just got no grunt. It's just like, it, it really just does the bare minimum. So Mike, uh, what were you doing immediately before 2000, the end of 2016, before Facebook announced that they were opening up the API? Yeah, no, it was a um, good question. Glad you asked it. Um, it's probably, uh, um, it was timely with when Zuck came out and opened that API up for us because prior to that, we were building a, a, a digital marketing platform uh, targeting, let's say, solopreneurs, the local marketing guy type guy, uh, anyone that wanted to, uh, let's say, take control of their own digital assets and, and at the same time provide a service to um, to small businesses. Obviously, I've got a passion for small business. I don't really care about the middle and the top end because uh, they don't actually pay on time anyway, Hilton. <laughs> but uh, no, look after the little fella. Um, and, bait, and it was all built around where we had problems you know, leading from the 90s through to now and uh, when we went, uh, you know, we, we did we did all the web, we did the AI, we then moved into the mobile space um, and then all of a sudden the, the screen size that everyone was on started getting bigger again. And, um, you know, mobile-friendly websites were great for the small sizes, 
but as we grew, you know, obviously then needed responsive websites and most of those were done in, dare I say it, in WordPress and, and obviously we all went down that channel as well and with WordPress you need themes and updating widgets and having a host that's not going to go down and they're usually set up in a garage somewhere in Oklahoma because they're going to give you the best deal and someone else is reselling it. So I got to a point where we just said, no, throw it. I need a platform that's going to manage my SMS, become my CRM, do my proposals, charge directly out and take money, you know, in lieu of services and subscriptions. So rather than invoicing a client every month, we just debit their credit card every month. So uh, that was one main part of it. Um, I was doing a lot of Facebook ads, pro you know, Obviously, prior to um, I got it, I got hit, hooked into those things around about 2011, and uh, must say I got pretty good at it. And um, so we were dr trying to keep our, our whole philosophy was how do we keep people inside Facebook because that's what Zuck wants. They don't want them to travel off into the you know the other sphere and um, uh, obviously leave the platform. It was something we learned back in the old days when CompuServe and AOL were around, they wanted everyone to stay inside the platform and they reward people for that. So that was our philosophy. Behind all that, we were, we wanted to build, be able to build a website for a small business that was one affordable, but it could work on the web on their, with their own domain it could be then also converted into a Facebook app. And by that, I mean, uh, you, you'll, you, could, you could set up a tab inside your Facebook page where your, your website with all the widgets and all the fun stuff were working. Um, so therefore, you could, we could actually direct people directly to the Facebook tab page. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all you know, prior to Zuck. Yeah, yeah. It, and, and works great on mobile. Uh, iPads, any device, anything with a screen and even TV, okay? Yeah. So part of our journey with all that, we had all these dream widgets that we're going to make, and one of those is obviously a food ordering widget which you've played with. Um, that's stemmed out of that, which we now brought into, um, into Messenger. Um, but coming up with cool widgets like that that just made it easy for people to build a functional website that was hosted for them. They didn't have to worry about that. But in our roadmap, we had live chat, okay? We were out there looking for a live chat third party. Yeah. You know, we weren't going to be one with something like that. You know, you'd need to use a third party because the infrastructure is just too broad. And, um, you know, it's Zuck's providing it, which was great, the same way as providing a really good platform for video. Yeah, well, how do you compete with 1.3 billion people? Oh, exactly. Why, why, why burn that opportunity? Yeah. So uh, myself and Silvio, my co-founder, um, we go, sheesh, this is going to solve this problem. Let's give it a try. We managed to hook it inside our, um, our own web platform, and it worked great. And then being techy, geeky, and coming out of the mobile space, we said, oh, I wonder if it could automatically respond back to a keyword because we'd build an SMS system using key auto responsive keywords. So if I'd set up a keyword called Hilton, yep. okay, and I'd gone, so it's effectively the comment growth tool, but this was inside, um, inside Messenger itself, and it would fire back, obviously, a little bit about, you know, you know pre-typed uh, pre up, with images and a little video feed and all that kind of stuff, and it came back. I thought, oh, yeah. So techos being techos go, right, well, what if we could push back with a number of keywords as buttons and which would run another sequence? And so that's how our very first automated conversation started inside Messenger. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and um, from that, yeah, geeks being geeks, Everything about Facebook's engagement, we thought, well, we, this is, we're going into a new space now. Yeah, yeah, we are. We're in a new, a new era. And uh, so uh, I guess uh, 
and Facebook are also looking at uh, what what have they allowed us to do on their platform and uh, what do they need to do to keep it under control because the last thing they want is uh, people not using their messaging messenger app anymore. That's right. So, uh, yeah, um, that's interesting. That's really cool. So let's talk about uh, some of the changes that are coming. Um, how are you guys going to manage um, the, the changes? What, what, what's going on in the back end now? Is like is Silvio and his team, are they um, frantically scrambling to, to make changes to to the, the platform or what's happening? Uh, Hilton, at no time do we scramble in the background. Okay, there's something we learnt, like, look at us. We're not young puppies. We we didn't come out of uni a couple of years ago when money was thrown at us. Um, we, <clears throat> we tend to leverage off a platform that's already existing there, okay, Facebook. Yeah. And Facebook would have, uh, Zuck would have started out with, a certain way he wanted things to go and we've already been through that era late 90s early 2000s so um, we all we anticipated that all the um, internet marketers would get on there and all the big coaches out there and they would ruin the market for every other per small business that wanted to let's say just keep in touch with their clients through broadcasting um, it would become spammy. So we, we, when we build our platform, we're more or less, at one point, we're, we've got the rules of Facebook and we set those rules and anyone that broadcasts out of those is basically putting that through Facebook before they're putting it out through our platform. All we're doing is providing the mechanism to, to hit the button, yeah. but they're letting Facebook determine whether that should go out or not. And, um, you know, people go, oh, my messages didn't go out. And it's like, well, okay, when was the last one you sent out? Oh, it was it was it promotional? Have you got messaging subscription permission? Da, 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 da. And it's like, get that, that, get that stuff sorted out. Stick inside the terms of service. Facebook, you know, Zuck will nail you if you do it the wrong way. And, and so it should. You know, he's given us a free platform. Everyone sticks by the rules. Uh, eventually, he's got to make money because he's got to keep his little sil Silicon Valley mates all happy um, and all the riffraff on Wall Street. And look, that's the nature of the beast. He's got a lot of data there. He needs to keep it obviously secure. And I won't talk about the security of data by third party applications on this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think it's going to be an interesting election uh, in the US next time. Uh, understanding how many um, how many subscribers there are on a certain platform, um, and yeah, at the end of the day, stick within the rules. We we stick within the rules. We don't try to overcomplicate everything. Um, you know, Zuck's trying to obviously make it understandable for for anybody. But um, I think there's a lot of people out there that try to overcomplicate it and um, just get back to common sense, mate. Okay. Yeah. So, like, in my opinion, um, as a marketer, I still don't I, – you know, I hold back on broadcasting. Yeah. I also don't uh, typically do it a lot for my business uh, bots, and uh, I find bots really uh, – useful for engaging with people when they come in and they initiate a conversation with you and and really uh that's that that is where they are so powerful um just uh i mean there's value in nurturing people but uh you also got to be uh careful to not upset people and, sp and spam them hey um this particular device was invented wasn't it the telephone, pick yeah. up the phone and yeah, call yeah. Is that way. Um, so I've got, a, I've got a question for you here from yeah. Muhammad. Uh, he says, Mike, what do you think, what are the things we should learn for future, for the future as a digital market marketer? 
What are the things that we should learn for the future as a digital marketer? Okay, good. Yeah. Thanks, Mohammed. Good question, mate. Um, I think with digital marketing right now, we, uh, we are social, okay? Um, and social um, means that people, are, you know, they are connecting, they are talking, they are recommending and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's still going to remain on the social platforms. The one thing you don't do is try and sell. Okay, don't go in for the hard sell. Um, it's uh, it's still conversational. I think digital digital marketers, Mohammed, if you're a digital marketer, mate, start getting into chatbots now because not too many digital marketers have actually um, stepped up, especially here in Australia. Um, they haven't figured out the power of it yet. But we're sticking with conversational marketing. We're using conversational marketing to build lists. We're building conversational marketing to actually utilize the artificial intelligence inside Facebook's ad manager platform. I'll repeat that one. The data that's collected inside Messenger and utilized in Facebook's ad, ad platform as a custom audience is more powerful than an email list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if your relevancy scores are dropping, in your ads, okay, obviously you've either got a broad audience um, and the content that you're putting in front of people is totally irrelevant. So obviously you're not hitting the right target. If you were to pick up your list, and ManyChat does this as well, you take out, you know, the PSID number, create an audience with it, and make sure it's aligned to the page where the audience came from. Don't try and do it for another page. You're just going to be... That's another black tick there from Facebook. And yeah, it'll be back on turbo again. Use it wisely. Use it smart. That's what's there for. Okay. Cool. But, but on the digital front, again, okay, Messenger is going to become a native. Well, it is already a native app now on my machine. Um, yeah, I've got it too. Yeah. What's going to happen is that is going to become our CRM. That is going to become our communication device. We will send email through it eventually, I'm sure. Our purchasing will be done by it, and especially with uh, Zuck's crypto. That's going to be exciting. Um, everyone yeah. gets paid from anywhere. It's just going to make life so much easier. He's done a great job. Um, all I can see is start looking at that, that one application. It's going to be, you know, it's what we're going to use on every device. Awesome. Thanks for that uh, advice there, Mike. Um, let's jump back into uh, the changes. So, um, like, I'm really curious, like a platform, let's just take, for example, the topic of the, uh, the nested menus. So currently you get, you get three primary menus and underneath that you can get five nested menus underneath that. Now that that's going and I, and I think that's part of the uh, when Facebook announced that they they streamlining the messenger app they're making it smaller and faster and so yep. that it's available to everybody because at the moment they got messenger and they got messenger light so yep. so that, that's what I was like referring to like do you guys have to go and change the the code and like what what's involved you know like have you had discussions with the team about that yeah look uh, we actually call that nested menu uh, persistent menu yeah and we do know um, that it is fairly heavy it's a heavy resource inside messenger and that would be obviously the primary reason that that they you know they wouldn't support it um, mate it's Look, it's just an option. It'll just won't show up the hamburger bar. Okay. <laughs> so you'll need to design your... Um, it was great while it lasted, I've got to say. Um, it made it feel like it's the chatbot was an application. Okay, I get that. But I think it's... Um, yeah, just when you build your chatbots, you just need to obviously drop a keyword in there, like a type in restart to start your chatbot back you know, and fire off one of the early triggers and get back to a menu. Mm. So what, what, what I reckon we'll probably end up seeing is there's going to be a little bit of um, 
Uh, what do you call it? Jeez. Uh, what do you call it when everyone's got to stick to a certain way? Everything I hate in life. Um, yeah, they'll have something that's... Um, yeah, it's just going to be a consistent method, which, you know, won't be good, but may, means that those with, with, you know, creative ways of doing things will, will find a workaround. Okay. So on the other side of things is for you guys, like the audience who are building chatbots or who have built chatbots, and, and Mike, yourself, uh, there's a lot of chatbots that you've built. So... Um, I've started to prepare and start looking at uh, some of the bots, some some of the features that are going. There is there is a doc. Um, so um, Facebook have a, There's a, I just don't have it right now, but uh, I'll put the link in the uh, in this post. Um, you've got to go through all your bots, and you've got to like like if you've got a nested menu, you've got to now go and think about okay, how am I going to change this persistent menu? to accommodate the new feature. Uh, another th feature that is going is, uh, as I said earlier before, um, if you ask people to send their location so that you can show them the nearest business closest to them or to give them directions to a business, uh, that's going away, but it is going to be replaced with something else. But but if you've got that feature in there, you need to, you need to um, go and redesign your, your chatbot. Another yeah. feature that's just come to mind is the, the share card. If you've, if you've got a uh, conversation in there that says, hey, please uh, click the share button on, the, on this card below to, to share yeah. it with your friends, that, that feature is going to be yeah. gone. Yeah. So uh, maybe it's... Oh, it's been great. There, there's a lot of changes that uh, builders need to uh, take into consideration oh. and go and change. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, for starters, with that share one, um, we actually avoided using it. All oh, right. Okay. Um, we didn't think it was necessary uh, to some extent. Uh, you could always share the link of your bot through another way, but, um, you know, um, sharing sharing bot conversations, it, it didn't really click with us, and we thought hey, there's no real value there anyway. Um, so not invest in it. Now with the location one, uh, we, we just use that in our form template. So yeah, we, from a server and we just pull all that out and it's just a question that goes. So for our users, it, it won't impact them uh, too much. And with the persistent menu, it just won't be there. So it's not anything the user is going to have to, let's say, worry about. Yeah. Um, or the builder's going to have to worry about. Um, it's just, uh, I think, look, when we were doing our training and building bots for our guys, we would only use that persistent menu to, you know, have a contact there or click to chat with a real person um, or go back to the main menu. Well, you know, you can just type in menu and you'll go back to the main menu and contact is pretty universal, so you'll bring the contact card up. Uh, when we build, uh, you know, design our bots now, it's basically if you if you are building a contact tap trigger, you would put, um, you know, obviously our quick replies underneath it, and above that would be website, Facebook page, and, and phone number. And that's just, uh, you know, a contact card, but with the complete menu in there. Yeah. So, uh, that would drive it all from there. Okay, I uh, I've had a look at your platform, and uh, you make collecting information uh, pretty seamless with some uh, standard uh, responses, like the form that you're talking about. You yeah. Know, you don't have to redesign that whole conversation. It's it's part and parcel of Bots Social. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, what's your your biggest mindset challenge? Um, that you've had to like um, growing your platform, your like, you know, there's yeah. so there's so many different like um, bot building platforms, and a lot of them are specialized in different different areas. So, what's your mindset challenge? Like, how do you see yourself like being the yeah. super powerful platform? 
Right. It can come down to a couple of things. One is human resources to implement it. Mate, we've got a roadmap for the next five years. We've already mapped out, okay? We just don't have the resources to build it. Um, and obviously, we need cash with resources. So even though, uh, so we've had to look at our business model um, very closely around that because being bootstrapped, uh, not one penny invested outside except for Mr. Visa and Mr. MasterCard. Um, we've got to, our niche is purely going after the agency guys, okay? Yeah. Those with, um, who want to build a business as a chatbot agency, okay? Everything I do, will white label it and they can run out with it, okay? The mindset we've got to shift from is the free part. Okay, um, being an old dot com guy, we saw this come in and bloody Bill Gates started giving away everything for free, which sucked the life and creativity out of a lot of software um, developers back then. Um, I see that many chat started going down that route and thank God they're now charging people for holding subscription database and all that kind of stuff. So there is a cost there. Um, but that's not our real market, okay? Our real market are the hardcore guys like the web developers who are, who are wanting to, let's say, put it this way, there's more money in chatbots than there are in websites, and a chatbot takes one-tenth of the time it does to build a website. So, you know, if you're not looking, if, you, if you're a web developer and you're not thinking about that, I'd suggest you do. Um, so the mindset around that change with the market is picked up by professionals, no problem, but for the everyday, let's call them a many chat user, okay, it's a little bit hard to fathom because they're looking for ways to get it for free. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, now there's 1.4 billion people out there. There's 90 million small to medium sized Facebook pages still with, I think it's 90 million, is it 90 million or nine? I think it's 90 million. 90 businesses. Yeah. Business pages, 90 million, yeah. So the frickin' pond is big, okay? Yeah. And we're only looking for those who want to actually provide it as a professional service. Um, we also don't, we have our own internal training which we don't make available online, and there's a reason for that. Um, the other reason is we also check every bot that goes out. Um, we're not going to go and say, yeah, yeah, look, you're an expert now. No, 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 I'll come back and I will flog that person and I'll say, look, really sharpen it up or otherwise you're giving our platform a really bad name, okay? Um, or do you want us to take over the, the development of your chatbots, okay? And you guys focus on your marketing. Just do sales and marketing for chatbots. Mm -hmm. We'll do the building for you and we'll, as a partner, we'll charge you a wholesale rate for that and you can add on to the retail and bump it up a bit more and pick up the services. You know, pick up the Facebook ad services. We'll build yeah. the bot, okay? Uh, let the smart ones and the professional ones build the bot. We've got a platform that does it. So that's where our our own mindset's at. It's edu like the an entrepreneur will pick, get it, okay? Yeah, okay. They're the ones we want. They'll see the business opportunity and they'll realise what the value is. Um, where we're also helping is I went to a, um, a social media thing last night. Subject was chatbots, Hilton. Thank God it's starting to move. Yeah. This lady was a um, is a um, many chat partner or no no she's now a trainer. She said, oh geez, yeah, I did the training thing and I got it. And I said, was it hard? She goes, oh, kidding. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I was in the room and, and, and we chatted. And, but the people in there that w were interested in chatbots, mate, they would have been, oh, I'm going to be nice with age here, but they would have been between 40 and 60. Okay. All, all solo business guys, okay? Yeah. And th I've now got to run a workshop for them in a month's time. It wasn't my it wasn't my gig last night. The, yeah. the 
coordinate, the coordinator gave me a call today and she goes, look, you know, um, our other mate, she's going to be back in Adelaide. Um, don't want to step on her toes. I'm pretty sure she's okay. But um, could you actually train some of the train some of these guys up? More than happy. Yeah, that's awesome, Absolutely. Mike. Yeah, I think there's okay. a lot of opportunity for training. Um, uh, yeah, we're well, helping. You know, we've tried to take this to um, even local and state government. It's a waste of bloody time. Um, but uh, you know, it's 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 the feedback we're getting from inside those groups that mean okay, this is what our partners okay. So if you you know you become the partner, I go Hilton. Here's here's your here's the avatar for who you're after. Yeah. Okay. And they might want to build it themselves, or you come in and build it for them, and then become their trusted guy and charge your monthly fee to look after them. That's all they want. They want to understand and they want to know how they can get people into the list. You know, you're dealing with an age group here that, and everyone's becoming um, multi-level marketing and network marketing, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, okay. So chatbot's the best solution for them. They understand that. Cool. Um, make it hard. Don't make it hard. So uh, just to explain to the audience, so Mike's got like two camps. He's... Uh, is co-founder of bots.social it's a bot building platform but it's more than a bot building platform as he alluded to earlier it uh, you can build uh, it, it's got a crm in it it's you can do your tabs your your web views and stuff for your your facebook pages but mike you also build chatbots and you've got you've got some real good uh, um, use case studies some some case studies what what is uh, What's the one that you're most proud of? Can you just tell us about this? Ah, mate, this one's an absolute... Look, the one I'm most proud about is the one that I haven't... We haven't actually published the case study um, yeah. to the public yet. Um, it will come. We we're going to try and get it in for this... Um, was it bloody pseudo bloody social media awards? You know, uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, I was um, uh, contacted by a, um, uh, a BPO, which is, you know, in the Philippines, it's where, you know, you outsource, you get your VA and all that kind of stuff from. Yeah, okay. So, so I was approached by an agency there because that industry is going gangbusters because obviously with, you know, different bits around the world, you can actually have your support operating 24-7. So what we did was um, uh, we put together a, a funnel, a really cool little chatbot funnel <clears throat> that went all the way through and introduced them to the job. You know, is this something that they reckon they could be good at? Yep. So it's a recruitment okay. type lead gen one, right? So we brought them in. It's like, oh, awesome, Hilton. Okay, mate. Um, I think um, what we'll need to do is get a couple of details and at the end of it we'll need to get your CV. Okay. So through that questioning path and right to the end, okay, they're actually uploading their CV, um, which is probably on their Google Drive anyway. Yeah. Right up there. Now, these guys were picking up candidates, okay, caught this. Um, after all ad costs and, and, and my costs and all that shit, three bucks a candidate. That's a CV in the inbox. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, and any time they want to go out and put a, um, there's a new position available and they're looking for people who are good in that area, we just run the campaign the same way. We'll obviously change what the job's about, but yep. the rest remains the same. And I'm still an admin of that page and I'll be watching Fox Tell in bed at, you know, 10, 10 o'clock at night time and it's just ding, 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 ding all night long. What an amazing tool. That is, uh, that is Mate, great. But can we get recruiters excited about it here? It's a <laughs> long challenge. Oh, dear. <laughs> They're not being educated. Yeah. So still go to their top end of town to get some advice. They got no freaking idea, okay? Uh, they'll probably come up with all sorts of bullshit reasons. Oh, Facebook's not, you know, nothing's private and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, good luck. But, uh, hey, everyone uses it. It's the easiest form. A lot of people don't use email now. 
Hilton, you know, yeah, my yeah. kids. There's no point emailing my kids because they won't pick it up. Um, ringing them, yeah, sometimes they pick up. Text, they'll get back to you. Messenger, bang. Okay, so yeah. so what I picked up in this conversation now is that the the target audience or the user of that particular bot that that you're talking about that uh, has got these amazing results, it's a kind of user that uh, understands, um, and they'll they'll go through the conversation all the way to the end. And uh, guys, um, if you know somebody in the recruitment agencies, like in that area, it, it's Messenger is so seamless to getting people's contacts and for people being able to upload CVs and and to provide information back. In, you know, um, it, Messenger is so powerful. It's, oh, uh, it's absolutely, and then of course the other one, which is uh, my niche, is uh, real estate. Yeah. Uh, and, um, mate, we, we launched an absolute ripper the other day. New client cleaned up their ad account, um, ran the ad for about five days in an area I don't, I've never ever been to. Um, and using the ads and, and, the, and the chatbot for less than 50 bucks Australian, we ended up with a, what, you know, basically 108 buyer inquiries come through the chatbot. So that's blending a good ad in with messenger now yeah i don't know about you but if you know if you've gone and had a look at real estate and you've tried to contact a real estate agent or follow up about something generally they won't get back to you yeah any time they'll get back to you is if you've signed a contract to buy something and they will hunt you down until it's all done but in the meantime nothing's really being nurtured or there's the communications dropped now i've got an agent here in the bush okay i mean in the bush yep yeah uh there's six and a half thousand full-time workers there we've got in his list now over five thousand okay so what is that 90 90 or something like yeah, no, 80 percent 80 percent yeah what's ten percent in between friends yeah but, that's because we continue a, we got a process, we have a strategy in place, we know it works, It's and we're, I'm trying to teach other agents how to do it now, and I'm, you know, while we were mucking around with getting your, um, your sound right, yeah. I've actually built a little, I've already built the chatbot for the next listing and got it up there, and, um, you know, it's just consistency, guys, you know? Cool. I love the stuff, mate. I could sit here for days on days and talk about this shit. So do you have fun building this stuff? I love it, mate. <laughs> I can, with having this platform, right, what it meant was if I woke up at, say, 2 o'clock in the morning yeah. and I had an idea, like, mate, I got no shit. In my sleep, I actually talk, I think, chatbot sequences. It's that sad, Okay. <laughs> if I wake up at two, I'll come in and I'll just get on there and have a cup of coffee and I'll build a chatbot. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I can, like, a lot of these chatbots, put, build it in my sleep. I don't sit there and draw shit. I do all the drawing at the end. Yeah. So that's when you have those really nice, perfect flows coming in. That's all done at the end. I, I, I've seen you. I've been on a, a training session with you, Mike, and you 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 know your platform. Like with Mike's platform, it's the is a bit of a learning curve, but once once you've you understand all the different parts of it, um, putting a chatbot together is um, oh. it's fun. It's it's it doesn't have to be a pull your hair out situation. Uh, oh. You can see how Mike. Uh, loves it and dreams about it and uh <laughs> yeah it just means you know it's um you know you, you you can build a chat bot and then have another coffee after it okay so and we'll just cycle all the way back to the beginning um if you're into you know building your business up and using marketing and using particularly messenger marketing check out bots.social um don't check out uh, lewis or ibm watson or dialogue flow because uh, those are chatbots for Bosch and um, I don't know NASA and stuff like that. 
Yeah, uh, people who can't afford them, yeah. Mike, uh, I just want to sh thank you for sharing uh, your insights and uh, giving us uh, an idea of, uh, you know, how you will adapt to the, the new changes that are coming up in August. And uh, yeah, thanks for sharing uh, your, your killer case study. That's awesome. Mate, Matt, happy, happy to do it anytime, Hilton. Cool. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you to everybody who's on, you know, obviously chatting, whether it's replay or live. Yep. Be good. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, catch you next time. See ya. Bye.